My dear friends, imagine for a moment that you've already achieved everything you've ever dreamed of. Picture yourself standing at the pinnacle of success, looking back on the path that brought you there. How does it feel? What do you see? More importantly, who have you become? This exercise might seem fanciful, perhaps even a bit foolish. After all, you might argue, isn't it better to face reality? To acknowledge where we truly stand rather than indulging in wishful thinking. But I put it to you that this imagining, this acting as if, is not mere daydreaming. It is, in fact, a powerful tool for shaping your reality and achieving your deepest aspirations. You see, when we act as if we've already won, we set in motion a series of transformations that can quite literally change our lives. It's not about denying reality or living in a fantasy world. It's about aligning our thoughts, actions, and very being with the person we aspire to be. But what does it mean to act as if you've already won? It's not about arrogance or presumption. It's not about puffing yourself up or putting others down. No, acting as if you've already won is about embodying the qualities, the mindset, the very essence of the person who has achieved what you aspire to achieve. Think for a moment about someone you admire, someone who has achieved great things in their field. How do they carry themselves? How do they speak? How do they approach challenges? Chances are they exhibit a quiet confidence, a sense of purpose, a resilience in the face of setbacks. They likely approach their work with a sense of joy and curiosity rather than grim determination. They probably treat others with kindness and respect, secure in their own worth rather than needing to prove themselves. These qualities, confidence, purpose, resilience, joy, kindness, these are not the results of success. They are the ingredients of success. And here's the wonderful secret. You can choose to embody these qualities right now, regardless of your current circumstances. But I hear you ask, isn't this just pretending? Isn't it authentic to act as if we've achieved something we haven't? These are fair questions and they deserve careful consideration. The key lies in understanding the difference between pretending and becoming. When we pretend, we put on a mask playing a role that isn't truly us, but when we act as if we've already won, we're not putting on a mask. We're removing one, we're peeling away the layers of doubt, fear, and limitation that have accumulated over years of living in a world that often seems designed to diminish us. You see, the person you become when you imagine yourself at the pinnacle of success, that person is not a fiction. That person is you, your truest self, freed from the constraints of fear and self-doubt. When you act as if you've already won, you're not becoming someone else. You're becoming more fully yourself. Let me share a personal anecdote to illustrate this point. Years ago, I found myself facing a challenge that seemed insurmountable. I had committed to writing a book on a topic that, as I delved deeper into it, proved far more complex than I had initially realized. With each passing day, I felt more and more out of my depth. Doubt crept in, then fear, then a paralyzing sense of inadequacy. How would I approach this task? Is, how would I approach this task if I were already a successful author? If I had already written numerous books if I were confident in my abilities and secure in my knowledge. The shift in perspective was immediate and profound. I realized that a successful author wouldn't be crippled by self-doubt. They would approach the task with curiosity and enthusiasm, seeing the complexity not as a barrier, but as an exciting challenge. They would break the task down into manageable parts tackling each with focus and determination. They would seek help when needed, not seeing it as a sign of weakness, but as a natural part of the creative process. <laughs> and so I began to act as if I were already that successful author. I approached my writing with renewed energy and purpose. 
I sought out resources and mentors without shame or hesitation. I treated each setback not as a confirmation of my inadequacy, but as a valuable learning experience. The result? Not only did I complete the book, but the process itself was transformed from a grueling ordeal into an exhilarating adventure. By acting as if I had already won, I discovered strengths and abilities I never knew I had. Now you might be thinking, that's all well and good, but surely we can't just ignore reality. What about when we face real obstacles, real limitations? And you'd be absolutely right to ask this. Acting as if you've already won doesn't mean ignoring reality. It means changing how you interact with reality. When you face an obstacle, how do you typically respond? Do you see it as proof that you're not good enough, that you'll never succeed? Or do you see it as a challenge to overcome, an opportunity to grow and learn? The person who has already won, the person you're becoming sees obstacles not as insurmountable barriers, but as stepping stones. They understand that challenges are not punishments, but opportunities for growth. They know that every setback contains within it the seeds of an equal or greater benefit, if only we have the wisdom to perceive it and the patience to cultivate it. This shift in perspective is not about denying the existence of obstacles. It's about changing your relationship to them. When you act as if you've already won, you approach challenges with a sense of confidence and resourcefulness. You know that you have within you everything you need to overcome whatever stands in your way. But let's delve deeper into this idea of acting as if you've already won. What does it look like in practice? How can we incorporate this principle into our daily lives? It starts, I believe, with your self-talk. The conversations we have with ourselves shape our reality more profoundly than we often realize. When you catch yourself engaging in negative self-talk, I can't do this, I'm not good enough. This is too hard, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, is this how a person who has already won would speak to themselves? Instead, try adopting the self-talk of someone who has already achieved what you aspire to. I've got this, I'm learning and growing every day. This challenge is making me stronger. It might feel awkward at first, even a bit silly. But remember, you're not pretending. You're practicing becoming the person you're meant to be. Next, consider your habits. The person who has already won likely has habits that support their success. They probably prioritize their health, knowing that Physical well-being is the foundation of achievement in any field. They likely have a regular practice of learning and self-improvement. They probably manage their time effectively, focusing on what's truly important rather than getting lost in busy work. What habits could you adopt today that align with the person you're becoming? Perhaps it's waking up a bit earlier to start your day with meditation or exercise, Maybe it's setting aside time each day for reading or skill development. It could be as simple as organizing your workspace to support focus and productivity. Remember, you're not waiting until you've made it adopt these habits. By adopting them now, you're actively becoming the person who has already won. Now let's talk about how this principle applies to your interactions with others. The person who's already won doesn't need to prove themselves constantly. They don't engage in petty competitions or put others down to feel better about themselves. Instead, they lift others up knowing that there's enough success to go around. When you act as if you've already won, you approach your relationship with generosity and kindness. You listen more than you speak, genuinely interested in others' perspectives. You offer help and support freely, knowing that your own success is enhanced, not diminished, by the success of others. This approach not only makes you a better friend, colleague, and community member, it also opens doors you might never have imagined. When you treat others with genuine respect and kindness, they're naturally drawn to you. They want to help you, 
to collaborate with you to see you succeed. But perhaps the most powerful aspect of acting is if you've already won, is the effect it has on your ability to take risks and embrace failure. You see, when we're caught up in the fear of failure, we play it safe. We stick to what we know, afraid to venture into unknown territory. But the person who has already won knows that failure is not the opposite of success. It's a crucial part of success. When you act as if you've already won, you're not paralyzed by the fear of failure. You understand that every failure is simply feedback, valuable information that helps you adjust your course and move closer to your goals. You're willing to take calculated risks, knowing that even if things don't work out as planned, you'll learn and grow from the experience. Think about it this way. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you attempt? What dreams would you pursue? What risk would you take? When you act as if you've already won, you tap into this fearless energy. You're willing to step out of your comfort zone to try new things, to push your boundaries. Now, I can almost hear some of you thinking, but isn't this all just positive thinking? Isn't it naive to ignore the very real challenges and obstacles we face? And these are valid concerns. After all, we live in a world that can often seem harsh and unforgiving. Isn't it wiser to be realistic, to keep our feet firmly on the ground? But here's the thing, acting as if you've already won isn't about ignoring reality. It's about engaging with reality from a position of strength and possibility rather than fear and limitation. It's about approaching life's challenges with the resources, both internal and external, of someone who has already achieved great things. When you face a difficult situation, does anxiety and self-doubt help you navigate it more effectively? Or do confidence and a sense of capability serve you better? When you act as if you've already won, you're choosing to approach challenges from a place of strength rather than weakness. Moreover, this approach allows you to see opportunities that you might otherwise miss. When you're caught up in worry and self-doubt, your focus narrows. You become fixated on potential pitfalls and problems. But when you act as if you've already won, your perspective broadens. You're able to see possibilities and potential solutions that might not be apparent from a more fearful standpoint. Let me give you another example from my own life. There was a time when I was offered an opportunity that on the surface seemed far beyond my capabilities. It was a chance to speak at a prestigious conference, sharing the stage with experts whom I had long admired from afar. My initial reaction was one of panic. I can't do this. I thought, I'm not qualified. I'll make a fool of myself. How would I approach this if I were already a renowned speaker, confident in my expertise and comfortable on any stage? The shift was immediate. Instead of seeing the invitation as a terrifying ordeal, I began to view it as an exciting opportunity to share ideas I was passionate about to learn from others in my field, to contribute to important discussions. Did this shift in perspective magically erase all my nervousness or instantaneously transform me into a brilliant orator? Of course not, but it did change how I prepared for the event. Instead of frantically trying to cram knowledge into my head to prove I belong there, I focused on distilling the unique insights I had to offer. Instead of agonizing over every potential mistake I might make, I practiced my delivery with enthusiasm, excited to share my message. The result? While I can't claim my talk was the highlight of the conference, it was well received. More importantly, the experience itself was transformative by acting as if I had already won. As if I were already the accomplished speaker, I aspired to be, I discovered capabilities I never knew I had. This, my friends, is the true power of acting 
as if you've already won. It's not about pretending to be something you're not. It's about giving yourself permission to be everything you can be. It's about stepping into your potential here and now, rather than waiting for some mythical future moment when you'll finally feel ready. Now, as we delve deeper into this principle of acting as if you've already won, let's consider how it applies to our daily lives, to the mundane tasks and challenges we all face. For it's in these everyday moments that the true power of this approach becomes apparent. Think about how you approach your work, whether it's in an office, a classroom, a workshop, or your own home. Do you trudge through your tasks, counting the minutes until you can be done? Or do you engage with your work as if you're already the successful, fulfilled individual you aspire to be? The person who's already won doesn't view their work as a burden to be endured. They see it as an opportunity to create, to contribute, to grow. They bring their full attention and energy to each task, no matter how small it might. They understand that excellence is not an act, but a habit cultivated in the most ordinary of moments. So I challenge you, do it begin your work day, act as if you've already achieved all your professional goals. Approach your tasks with the confidence and purpose of someone at the top of their field. How might this change the quality of your work? How might it affect your interactions with colleagues or clients? You might be surprised to find that this shift in mindset not only makes your work more enjoyable, but also more effective. When you act as if you've already won, you tap into reserves of creativity and problem-solving ability that you might not have known you possessed. But let's move beyond work and consider how this principle applies to our personal lives, to our relationships with family and friends. The person who has already won doesn't take their loved ones for granted. They don't constantly seek validation or approval. Instead, they approach their relationships from a place of fullness, of having something valuable to offer. When you act as if you've already won in your personal life, you become more present, more attentive to the needs of others. You listen more deeply, love more freely, forgive more readily. You're not constantly trying to prove your worth or win approval because you already know your own value. Imagine how this might transform your relationships. How might your interactions change if you approached each conversation, each encounter from a place of inner security and abundance rather than neediness or insecurity. Now, I can almost hear some of you thinking, but what about humility? Doesn't acting as if we've already won lead to arrogance or complacency? It's a fair question and an important one to address. You see, true humility isn't about thinking less of yourself. It's about thinking of yourself less. When you act as if you've already won, you're not puffing yourself up or putting others down. You're simply freeing yourself from the constant need to prove your worth, allowing you to focus more fully on others and on the task at hand. Moreover, the person who has truly won understands that success is not a finite resource. They don't need to diminish others to elevate themselves. Instead, they seek to lift others up, knowing that by doing so, they create a rising tide that lifts all boats. Have you ever met someone who's truly successful, truly confident in themselves? Chances are they didn't feel the need to constantly assert their superiority or put others down. True confidence, the kind that comes from acting as if you've already won, is quiet, assured, and kind. But let's address another concern that might be arising in your minds. Isn't this all just self-deception? You might be asking, aren't we just fooling ourselves by pretending to be something we're not? This is a crucial point, and I'm glad we're addressing it. Because acting as if you've already won is not about self-deception. It's about self-actualization. It's about recognizing that the person you aspire to be, that's successful confident, fulfilled individual is not some distant, unreachable ideal. 
That person is you right now, if only you have the courage to step into that reality. Um, when a caterpillar enters its chrysalis, it doesn't wait until it has wings to start thinking of itself as a butterfly. The transformation begins with a change in its very DNA long before any physical changes are in the same way. Your transformation begins not when you've achieved all your goals, but when you begin to think, act, and perceive yourself as the person who has achieved those goals, the external manifestations, the success, the recognition, the achievements. These are simply the outward signs of an inner transformation that has already taken place. Now, let's talk about how this principle applies to setbacks and failures. Because make no mistake, acting as if you've already won doesn't mean you'll never face challenges or experience setbacks. But it does radically change how you respond to these When you act as if you've already won, you approach setbacks not as devastating blows, but as valuable feedback. You understand that every successful person has faced failures and setbacks. The differences in how they respond to these experiences. Think about a recent setback you've experienced. How did you react? Did you allow it to deflate you, to reinforce beliefs about your own inadequacy, or did you approach it as a learning opportunity, a chance to grow and improve? The person who's already won doesn't allow setbacks to define them. They don't wallow in self-pity or assign blame. Instead, they ask themselves, what can I learn from this? What, how can I use this experience to become better, stronger, more effective? This resilience, this ability to bounce back from setbacks is not a trait that some are born with and others lack. It's a skill that can be developed and acting as if you've already won is one of the most powerful ways to cultivate it. But let's delve even deeper into this idea. Acting as if you've already won isn't just about how you respond to external circumstances. It's about how you treat yourself, how you nurture your own growth and development. The person who has already won understands the, the importance of self-care. They know that their mind, body, and spirit are the instruments through which they achieve their goals and make their contribution to the world. As such, they prioritize their own well-being, not out of selfishness, but out of a deep commitment to being their best selves. Well, how would you treat yourself if you had already achieved all your goals? Would you push yourself to the point of burnout, or would you ensure you got enough rest and renewal? Would you fuel your body with whatever was convenient, or would you nourish yourself with foods that support your health and vitality? Would you neglect your mental and emotional well-being, or would you prioritize practices that support your psychological health? When you act as if you've already won, you treat yourself with the same care and respect that you would offer to someone you deeply admire. You understand that self-care isn't selfish. It's essential to your ability to perform at your best and make your fullest contribution to the world. Now let's consider how this principle applies to learning and growth. The person who has already won doesn't rest on their laurels. They understand that in our rapidly changing world, continuous learning and adaptation are essential to ongoing success. When you act as if you've already won, you approach learning not as a chore or an admission of inadequacy, but as an exciting opportunity to expand your capabilities. You're not afraid to be a beginner, to admit what you don't know, because your sense of self-worth isn't tied to knowing everything. Think about a skill. You've always wanted to develop or a subject you've wanted to learn about. What's held you back? Has it been fear of looking foolish, of not being immediately good at it? When you act as if you've already won, you free yourself from these fears. You give yourself permission to be a beginner, to make mistakes, to learn and grow. This openness to learning, this willingness to be a beginner, is one of the most powerful aspects of acting as if you've already won. It allows you to continually expand your horizons 
to discover new passions and capabilities, to reinvent yourself as needed in our ever-changing world. But perhaps the most profound impact of acting as if you've already won is on your ability to contribute to others and to the world around you. You see, when we're caught up in trying to prove ourselves and striving to make it, we often become self-absorbed. Our focus narrows to our own needs, our own goals, our own struggles. But the person who has already won understands that true fulfillment comes not from what we achieve for ourselves, but from what we contribute to others. They know that their success is not an end in itself, but a means to make a greater impact. When you act as if you've already won, you free yourself to focus on how you can contribute, how you can add value to others' lives. You approach your work, not just as a means to earn a living, but as a way to make a meaningful difference. You engage with your community, not out of obligation, but out of a genuine desire to contribute to the common good. How would your approach to your work change if you weren't constantly worried about proving yourself or advancing your career? How might you engage differently with your community if you were coming from a place of abundance rather than scarcity? The shift from self-focus to other focus is not just beneficial for those around you. It's profoundly fulfilling for you as well. There's a deep satisfaction, a sense of purpose and meaning that comes from knowing you're making a positive difference in the world. Now, as we near the end of our time together, I want to address a question that might be lingering in your minds. This all sounds well and good. You might be thinking, but how do I start? How do I begin to act as if I've already won when my current reality seems so far from that ideal? The key, my friends, is to start small. You don't have to transform your entire life overnight. Begin with one area, one aspect of your life where you can practice this principle. Perhaps it's in how you approach your work, moral. Maybe it's in how you engage with a family member or a friend. It could be in how you treat yourself, giving yourself the same care and consideration you would offer to someone you deeply respect. How would I approach the situation if I had already achieved all my goals? How would I carry myself? How would I speak? How would I think about this challenge? Then for just that moment, act as if that were already true. Bring that energy, that confidence, that sense of purpose to that one interaction, that one task. As you do this, pay attention to how it feels. Notice how it affects your performance, your interactions, your sense of self. You may be surprised at the immediate impact this small shift can have. And here's the wonderful thing. As you practice this, as you act as if you've already won in small ways, you'll find it becoming more natural, more authentic. What started as a conscious choice becomes a habit, a way of being. You see, we often think that we have to feel confident before we can act confidently, that we have to achieve success before we can think like a successful person. But the truth is, by acting as if you've already won, you begin to feel like a winner. By thinking like a successful person, you set in motion the very actions that lead to success. This isn't magic or wishful thinking. It's a profound psychological truth. Our actions shape our thoughts and feelings just as much as our thoughts and feelings shape our actions. By choosing to act as if you've already won, you create a positive feedback loop that can literally transform your life. But I want to emphasize something crucial here. Acting as if you've already won doesn't mean pretending that challenges don't exist or that hard work isn't necessary. Quite the opposite. The person who has truly won understands the value of effort, the necessity of perseverance. When you act as if you've already won, you approach challenges not with dread or resentment, but with determination and even excitement. You see obstacles not as unfair burdens, but as opportunities to grow, to prove your mettle, to become even stronger and more capable. Think of it this way. 
A champion athlete doesn't resent the grueling training sessions or the fierce competition. They embrace these challenges knowing that they are the very things that forge their great in the same way. When you act as if you've already won, you embrace life's challenges as the raw material from which you craft your success. As we conclude our time together, I want to leave you with a challenge. For the next week, I want you to practice acting as if you've already won in one area of your life. Choose an area where you've been struggling, where you felt stuck or unsure. For that week, approach this area of your life with the confidence, the purpose, the joy of someone who has already achieved everything they've ever wanted. Notice how this changes your actions, your decisions, your interactions with others. At the end of the week, reflect on your experience. What changed? How did you feel? What did you learn about yourself? Remember, the goal isn't to achieve instant, miraculous results. The goal is to begin shifting your perspective, to start aligning your thoughts and actions with the person you're capable of becoming. Because here's the profound truth I want you to take away from our time together. You already are that person. The successful, confident, fulfilled individual you aspire to be isn't some distant future version of yourself. That person is you right now. If only you have the courage to recognize it and act accordingly.